All right, first new thing, all upbeats, all upstrokes. So something I do with this, rhythms like this, I will quietly say, or at least mouth, the downbeats. So saying one, two, three, four, quietly. But I will emphasize saying the ands, so this way I'm really driving the point home where I'm trying to play. Uh, and I do remember you're going to keep working on that speed drill from last time and get some more out of it. So keep on going with that. So here it is, 60 beats a minute, number one. One, two, three, four, and, 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 all right, 120. One, two, three, four. And, 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 and. Okay, make sure to keep that foot tapping. I like to keep the head bobbing, as you probably noticed. Really make sure you're staying on that downbeat. So this way you're truly hitting the upstrokes on the upbeat. It gets a little squirrely as you get faster with that particular uh, rhythmic approach. So just be careful on that. You don't want to be strumming while that metronome's clicking. Got to be directly in between. Same thing, the tapping's got to be, tapping's got to be right on the metronome. So every time that foot comes up, hand comes up. So just move it up nice and slow, and you will get it. All right, here's 60 beats a minute with this guy. Uh, but first, or for like these three bars, uh, you've got basically eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note that keeps it happening again and again and again. And if I was to continue that pattern, bar four would look just like bar one. So just breaking it up so we're not repeating this again until we start over and the strumming pattern is going to continue to go down up up down down up up down and so on so here we go 60 beats a minute one two three four one and and three four and and two three and and one Two and and four and 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 one and then three four and and two three and and one two and and four and 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 done and I have twenty. A one, two, three, four, one and, and three, and, and two, three, and, and one, two, and, and four, and two, and three, and, and one, and, and three, four, and, and two, three, and, and one, two, and, and four, and two, and, and, and done. Alright, on the number three, the polyrhythm. So it's polyrhythmic because you have these two chords evenly spaced across these three beats and that continues to happen so two chords evenly spaced across those three beats continues to do that for these three bars and just like the last exercise the last rhythm if i was to continue that pattern bar four would look just like bar number one so that's why we're just changing it up here and just be careful of those chords right there we got two chords in the fourth bar here we go at 60. One, two, three, four, one, and four, and three, and 
two and one and two and and four one and four and three and two and one and two and and four down. So you may have noticed just like the upbeat stuff in number one, I was mouthing or saying quietly other parts of the uh, full rhythm in here, you know, like more of the eighth note count, just to help me stay in line with where I'm at. So you can say, you know, the one and two and three and four and all that stuff throughout. Just make sure you emphasize the part that you play to really differentiate what you are strumming and what you're not. So here we go with 120. One, two, three, four, one, and four, and three, and two, and one, two, and, and four, one, and four, and three, and two, and one, and two, and, and four, done. <clears throat> that was a lovely noise, wasn't it? All right, this guy. Let's change this bit. Okay. So, basically, uh, as far as, like, the, the main thing is to write everything out. So, taking everything here and starting it on the A string, and then you start everything on the D string and so on. And uh, make sure you write the uh, name of the arpeggio, or name of the chord being arpeggiated along with the Roman numeral associated with it, so you continue to drive home the numbered chord progression system. As far as playing this stuff, um, I mean, picking it, the economy picking is actually going to be the fastest way to run through something like this. However, because one thing we're working on is improving your strict alternate picking, try your best to alternate pick the whole time. So it might make it easier if you play every arpeggio twice. So this way, every time you go to a new one, you're starting with a downstroke. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Um. That was a bad note to end on. So, the uh, same idea with the other arpeggios. Just kind of run through maybe like each one twice to help you work on the alternate picking there. And eventually, you can try doing it uh, just as it's written there. Just try and be very careful with how things are going to go with the pickings. So. Uh, and just so you kind of get an idea, just to make sure that the work's done correct, I'll, I'll just demonstrate real quick how line number two should look. Um, so basically, you get that for the C chord. There's your D minor. Here's your E minor. There's the F. There's your G. Your A minor your B diminished. Now this is the one that can be written an octave lower as well because the lowest fret number within these these three notes here the lowest number is 12 so that's your indication that we can drop it down whoops drop it down to uh, the open string there. So that's how that should look but obviously put in the uh, the chord names and the Roman numerals and then for this guy, it's just so you know how it looks. Uh, we just double check at least the next one starting on the A string. So there's your C chord, D minor, E minor, F. There's your G, A minor. So again, the lowest fret number in this arpeggio is 12. So that means we can drop this guy down full octave with the open string position. 
and then last we have being diminished. So another little hint here. All these arpeggios starting on the E, A, D, and B strings will all retain the same shapes. It's the ones that go that start on the G string. Those will look different. So just keep that in mind. The shapes will change a bit. The notes themselves will be the same. But the shapes will look a little bit different as far as the fingering goes. And that's something else that's on the screen right now. So, I didn't minimize it. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I believe that covers everything. But if you have any questions throughout the week, let me know. Any questions with writing out the arpeggios, let me know. And I'll see you again on Monday.